Hey guys, today I am going to be doing quite a few different things. I'm going to be really busy actually the next couple weeks, so I wanted to kind of just bring you along with the projects I have today. I need to take care of my plants, and I have uh, this thingy. It was a ball, but Gunther popped it, so Thomas wants me to stuff it and make it to where it's more like a stuffed animal ball. <laughs> so I need to sew that up. And I also need to work on deconstructing my chair more. I have this chair that I've been taking all the upholstery off for a while, but it's old and sun damaged. And so the fabric isn't working very well. And unfortunately it was done really well to where it's really difficult for me. And there's a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also I have to do laundry, but I won't show you that horrible awfulness that is laundry. And nor will I show you cleaning my floors because that's boring. But yeah, I'm just going to be working on some things and I thought it might be kind of fun for you guys to see. We'll do some planty things, some other things that just need to get done. So um, let's go do something. Oh, I think I'm actually going to fix this first. I'm going to be filling up my fish tank along with watering my plants and when I do that I use this prime fish tank whatever yeah it's a chlorine and chloramine thing and it detoxifies ammonia nitrates and nitrites and so what that means is that if you get an imbalance in your things in your fish tank then you can use this to save your fish because it kind of binds them up and stuff but I use that in with this because it only takes two drops and I've had this for over a year because I only have two 10 gallon tanks and I give them about a gallon of water every week. I use it for my plants water sometimes too for the ones that are more sensitive to um, chlorine and chloramine. I will use this um, like my dracenias and my prayer plants and things. I have not found any burning happening with this. I also haven't found any information of anyone using this on their plants. I just decided to do that one time when I had extra water from filling up my fish tank. So yeah, that's just something that I do. I don't necessarily recommend it because I don't really know if it's necessarily good what I'm doing. <laughs> I just like to use this for the chemicals really because that's I think what bothers them the most is just too many chemicals and I think too much fertilizer can burn them too so I don't tend to fertilize them too heavy but I am going to be fertilizing some of my plants and I'm going to be using the Spoma fertilizers for my cactuses because some of them are blooming or getting ready to bloom and then also well my, uh, my succulents mostly but I water my cactuses with the same stuff because they start blooming in the next month or two anyways. And I'm going to be using the Spoma Indoor Fertilizer for a few of them that I've been noticing some yellowing on their leaves. Um, like my Philodendron Celloum kind of plant. That one has had some yellowing on its leaves. Ever since I put some more worm castings on there, the yellowing has slowly started going away. I just want to give it a little extra boost. That one and my Fiddly Fig and also my head planter there's this plant i don't know what it's called it grows like crazy but that one has been yellowing and i want to give it some extra nutrients so anyways 
I get these jugs at Goodwill or yard sales because I don't want to buy new plastic when there's plenty of old plastic to go around. And I like these Rubbermaid ones the most, the most, <laughs> because they're nice and sturdy. Like you can bend them a little bit, but they're not gonna break, like really bend. And so when you carry them, it's not as heavy because it holds its structure better. They're just easier to use. So yeah, and I fill it up in the bathtub because it's just really fast to fill it up in there. So also, um, I try to keep the water warm, but not too warm, like on the cooler side of warm when I fill up my container. That's just what I prefer for my fish tank and for my plants. That way I'm not shocking them. I like it to be more of an ambient air temperature, if that makes sense. It's going to feel a little cold to me, but it's not actually going to be cold because it's more of a room temperature. Water basically transfers heat differently and so even though the water can be like you know 70 degrees or 80 degrees or something it can actually still feel cold to you sometimes anyways let's get to it I usually do two doses for these things because I don't like to do them full strength. You're supposed to do one dose per quart of water, but I do like usually two doses for one of those things, which is a whole gallon. Um, it's definitely not as many, much as you're supposed to use, but I do fertilize with other kinds of fertilizers just like worm castings for instance and so I don't like to over fertilize them but I like to give this to help them with flowering and stuff so anyways I just give them a little extra For the other plants, I do the same thing. I just use two doses of this because, like I said, um, they don't. I don't want to overdo it with fertilizer since I already give them uh, like a bi-yearly fertilizer with the worm castings, or you know whatever else I decide to use, like whether it's buffalo or something <laughs> like an indoor house plant compost, basically. Um, I just top dress all my soils with that. I don't do that bi-yearly for my succulents. I actually, for most of them, I only do that every couple of years-ish because they don't need it for the most part. Succulents don't need a lot of fertilizer, but some of my houseplants do need a lot, so I like to give them a little extra sometimes with this. Show you really quick I got another sip supply box in for this month because they're starting to do these gift boxes that you can get separate from your monthly order so this one was a Galentine's tea box and so like it says made for friends because it's not made for a specific person I guess whatever but it still has all the coupon codes for the teas in there and it tells you all about them like they usually have them and so in this one it's all chocolate teas um, this one is actually a carob, whoops, but they have all sorts of other ones too, like um, ones are floral boxes and they're going to have more for like Mother's Day and stuff. 
So, anyways, I don't have a coupon code for these. They only have coupon codes for the monthly boxes. So I'll put my coupon code for the monthly box in the description anyways for you, but I don't get any kickback. They just sent me this box of tea and I thought I'd show you because if you're wanting to get just a single box of tea, they have that now as well, which is kind of fun. Instead of redoing my chair right now, I got a little distracted and I decided I wanted to redo this shelf. And I haven't been able to put really very many live plants up here since my husband hasn't put my LED lights up here yet. So I am going to make a little preserved moss terrarium. These are really easy to make. I have a whole video of me making a few of these but it's not done with my new camera, it's done with my really old one. So I just thought I'd just show you kind of really quick how I make them. Uh, today I'm actually going to use this, some sort of fake sand, it's like made with foam or something that came in a kit. And so a way to reuse it, I thought I could use it for these. So I'm just doing a layer of this to make it look like rock or whatever in an actual terrarium. And then, so see. And then I got some preserved moss right here. So I'm just gonna get a chunk of that. And this is actually a little bit harder to work with than live moss because you can't really form it as well. You can get this wet and then form it around things, but I don't really recommend that for this kind of stuff because you want it to stay dry. Whereas it's kind of fine when it's around actual plants because it will get wet if you put it on actual house plants, but it gives it a time to dry out. Whereas this is going to be in a little container so it can't dry out. So just like that. And then I gotta pick out a rock. And I like to use rocks that have a little bit of dirt on them because then it makes them look a little bit more like they're in actual dirt. Just stick that there. Could add more rocks around the edge. And you can always add something in there that's really cute. So, yeah. It's just something. I don't know. <laughs> or you can also use something that's a lot bigger. It's easier to make like dips and valleys and hills with live moss and they can actually turn out a lot prettier with live moss. But I don't have any live moss right now. So maybe someday I should make some little terrariums and show you how to make those because they're really fun and really easy. Oh, there's a piece of salt. <laughs> See, that's kind of pretty with it in the sun. Ooh. So then I use a cloth that either has some like distilled or reverse osmosis water or some rubbing alcohol on here. And just gets rid of all the little spots that I made on it. Where's the lid? Here's the lid. I took out some popsicle sticks and I just drew names of seeds I need to plant on them and then the picture of them basically on the backs. So that way you can tell what they are from either side too and I thought that would be kind of cute up here with it. And then I found my sprayer actually doesn't work anymore but I've kept it because I think it's really pretty. So I just kind of redid things a little bit. I wanted more green things on there. So now though, I'm gonna do something else. So this has been sitting up on my shelf next to the cabinet for a while now, but it's growing out from around this as you can see. So I'm going to put this in this pot. This pot isn't much bigger, but it's a little bit wider. 
So, oh, parts of it, I want to take off these rocks for sure because they're just glued on there and they're coming off anyways. And when I plant Sansevierias, I like to plant them in more regular potting soil. I kind of mix regular potting soil with um, cactus mix. Basically just a more airy version of regular potting soil because they need, I don't know, they just, they don't seem to do as well in cactus mix for me personally where I live. However, where you live, they might do better in actual cactus mix. But they just seem like one of those kinds of plants that don't need quite so much stuff. Oh. Hmm. They have this thing around them. This was tied up when I got it. And I untied it, but there's still a thing at the bottom that I didn't realize was there. Oh my goodness, what the heck is this? What? Maybe I can pull it up this way. It's like some kind of bandaging stuff. Wow, that must feel better. I'm gonna put soil up to where like that white part is on these. You see that? So I'm gonna just cover that and that will be good. My battery was getting low after I repotted the plants I already showed you, so I went to charge it, but I had the repotting bug and I had to keep going. I repotted this asparagus fern, which will probably be needing to go into a bigger pot um, maybe this summer, but for now it likes being in this pot. It was in a little teeny tiny pot about like this big. And then I repotted, well no wait, I showed you that one. So I also moved a lot of things around because I repotted the little, whatchamacallit, the arrowhead plant that was right here. It wasn't doing so good, so I repotted it. It's in the laundry room right now, but I moved the string of bananas here. And I repotted this plant that I just got into here and moved it over here. I moved this Norfolk pine from my kitchen window over to here. Also, the plant that was right here, I moved into my craft room. I repotted the lipstick plant and put it over here in the living room. So I put this plant up over here, so that way I have two plants in here. I feel like they need to be a little closer to the window, but whatever. I was gonna put the string of bananas up in a planter right here instead, hanging up. Oh, but it looks so bad. I didn't like it. So I went ahead and left it here. Oh, and I moved this one from my kitchen over to here. This window's getting a little crowded now, but whatever. Then I took my Sansevieria that Charlotte had slept in a few times when she was a little tiny kitten, and she uprooted some things when she kind of pushed them over. And so I'm using painter's tape turned the other way around where this is the sticky side, so that way it's not going to be sticking to the plant, and when it's time to take them off, it's easy to take the tape off of it, and it's much more supportive than like rope would be because it's just a little tiny string whereas this is actually pretty broad and it's keeping everything in place thankfully because there's about three of them that they're too tall to stay in without being you know supported somehow and this one was one that actually had broken off and it's it looks like it's rotting it's not doing good but everything else is doing nicely I'm not seeing that in anything else I repotted so once I see shoots coming up from the sides I will know that the rhizome has grown out and it's gotten enough roots that I can go ahead and cut these off and I will be good to go they'll do just fine that way it's just they don't have as crazy of roots as 
other things because they are more of a succulent and they are rhizomous. So they're like irises, plants like that where they have a rhizome that goes out, it creates like almost a runner and then pops back up with another plant. And that's how they spread. This one has been here for a while and this was a, the only cutting of a Sansevieria that has ever done well for me and it's done well in this window. So I have high hopes for it. This is the chair that I'm working on. It was all this, and as I'm doing everything, like taking off all this upholstery, I'm finding that it used to be like this. So, anyways, it's been a little bit of a pain in the butt, but I like these legs. They're really nice. They have a nice shape to them, and they're not too pointed, so if you like walk by it and you stub your foot on it, it's not going to be as painful. <laughs> Um, the only thing was that I was hoping that this part would be nice so I could leave it open and undone on this part, but there's holes and it's, this chair was not meant to have any of it showing of the wood other than the legs, so unfortunately I'll have to recover all of it. But I'm going to be using some drop cloth to see how well it works. I want to see how easy this will be to clean. Um, this probably would work better actually as a slip cover, but I just want to see how well I can actually keep it clean, just for the sake of knowing, I guess. I already have this whole front part taken off, of course, and the sides for the most part, and the back. So I've really done a lot on it already. It's just around some of these edges and things, it, it took me quite a few hours to get all this done that I got done because well, I mean you can still see that there's tons of little staples in here I don't have to get all of them out of course but all of this in here has just so many of them and it takes a long time because they're really in there and this fabric in some places it's really sun damaged and so the fabric comes away without pulling out any of the nails and the nails are in there so good that I have to use a screwdriver to get them out <laughs> and it's it's very tedious and time consuming so I'm gonna keep working on this today. First before I get on to working with my chair I was gonna ask you guys my dad found this money plant that was getting thrown away and these don't seem like they're really that healthy and it's just this one little shoot coming up from it now so I was thinking, what if I cut it off and stuck it in my fish tank to root it? Have you guys ever had any success with that? I won't do anything with it until after this video is published, so that way you guys can let me know. Um, so that way I can know maybe how to re-root this thing, maybe more successfully. I typically do the best with rooting things in my fish tank, so if you have success water propagating these, Please let me know, or if you know that it doesn't work good, let me know that too. I got everything off of it now so all that's left for me to do is put some fabric on it I guess and figure out what I want to do I do have some blue velvet that I was thinking would be pretty on it too 
so we shall see. But maybe in my next video I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. I might film some of me actually putting it together too, so yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a really great week. And if you have any recommendations as far as rerouting that money tree goes, please do let me know in the comment section below. And I will talk to you next week. And hopefully I will have my chair done. I better to have my chair done by then. So yeah, we'll talk to you later. Bye.